Capacitors come in a variety of configurations and are used in many different circuits and machinery, but how do they actually work and how do we calculate their capacitances? The basic idea of a capacitor is a circuit element that stores energy within an electric field. These opposite charges create a uniform electric field, which then stores energy in a potential difference it creates across the plates. In general, capacitors do this by having two plates that have opposite charges. These opposite charges create a uniform electric field, which then stores energy in a potential difference it creates across the plates. Now, arguably the most important equation that ties these quantities and concepts together is Q equals CV, or that the plate charge equals the capacitance times the potential difference across the plates, or voltage. And while you've most likely encountered charge and voltage in past electricity problems, let's take a look at how to calculate C, or capacitance. Essentially, the process for solving for capacitance C can be broken down into three simple steps. First, calculate the electric field between the plates using Gauss's law, assuming some charges positive and negative Q on the two plates. Next, find the corresponding potential difference by integrating the electric field over the plate distance. Finally, using the relationship Q equals CV, solve for C. Let's see this process in action, starting first with the most common type of capacitor, the parallel plate capacitor. With two metal plates with charges, areas, and separation distance, we'll call plus and minus Q, A, and D, respectively. To find the electric field between the two plates, all we need to do is apply Gauss's law, which if you haven't seen my video on that topic, please watch and learn about that before solving capacitance problems. For this case, let's choose a Gaussian surface of a rectangular prism with top and bottom areas A and height H. Applying Gauss's law and remembering that the electric field inside conductors is zero, thus making the flux through our prism face inside the plate equal to zero, we can arrive at an equation for the electric field between two parallel plates. To find the potential difference between these two plates, let's recall the formula delta V equals the negative integral of the dot product between the electric field and displacement vectors. Calling our starting position D and final position 0, or the origin, and noticing that our electric field equation is actually independent of displacement, we can solve for the voltage across our parallel plates. For our final step, let's plug in our calculated V value with the equation Q equals CV. Realizing that our assumed variable charge Q cancels out, we can arrive at an equation for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. This exact same process can be applied to another common capacitor type, coaxial cylinders. Assuming some inner radius A, outer radius B, length L, and charges plus and minus Q on each of the inside and outside cylinders, we can once again apply our three-step process to solve for its capacitance. Finding the electric field like before involves the use of Gauss's law. Choosing our Gaussian surface as some cylinder with radius R and length L, we can solve for the electric field in between these two cylindrical plates. To find the potential difference, let's integrate the negative of our electric field equation over the displacement between our inner and outer radii, starting from the inside and integrating along the radial path outwards. With some basic integration and logarithm rules, we can arrive at a simple equation for the potential difference V across our cylinders. Finally, once again using the Q equals CV equation, we can solve for the capacitance due to a coaxial cylindrical capacitor. One final configuration we need to take a look at is concentric spherical capacitors, with inner and outer radii we'll once again call A and B respectively, and charges positive and negative Q. The process here is exactly the same as the past two. Step one, find the electric field between the spheres using Gauss's law. Taking our Gaussian surface as a sphere of some radius r, the equation for the electric field is not hard to find. For step two, we can integrate the negative of our electric field from the inner to outer radius again. Finally, plugging this into our equation Q equals CV, the capacitance of two cocentric charged spheres can be found. Now, one interesting thing to note is that a single charged sphere actually has a capacitance of its own and the ability to store charge and energy. To calculate its capacitance, imagine that we have a cocentric spherical capacitor, but the outer radius approaches infinity. With this creative manipulation, the isolated sphere capacitance is actually quite easy to find. One final important set of equations to note is that the potential energy stored within these capacitors, U, is equal to 1 half CV squared. Now, this equation can easily be used in tandem with Q equals CV, giving a multitude of different forms for the potential energy, so use whichever form has the most variables given to you in the problem. While capacitance calculations may seem tedious and redundant at first, their applications in things like RC circuits and other related concepts like dielectrics truly makes them one of the most fascinating and thought-provoking concepts. However, those will all be topics for future videos. For now, you can feel good that you've just learned about different capacitor configurations and how to calculate capacitance.